Okay. All right. So 11.1. .1. So we're looking at circular motion, motion in a circle. And we're going to focus on circular motion at constant speed. So keep that in mind as we study this. Um, so again, let's look at some pictures. So remember, in the previous video, we saw what is the axis of rotation. It's an, it's an axis that's perpendicular to this plane that the object is rotating in. Okay? Um, but actually, I, I said the wrong word. If the axis, there's the object, right? And it's, and it's moving in this kind of circular path. If the axis is external, the axis of rotation is external to the object, meaning it's not inside the object, then we say that the, the object or the block revolves. Okay? So the block is now revolving. Okay? And it's revolving around the axis of rotation. However, um, the turntable, this table, which is this, uh, this, yeah, it's a turntable. It it rotates. Why does it rotate? It rotates because the axis is internal. So if the axis is external to the object, then it revolves. If the axis of rotation is internal, then it um, it rotates. So for example, this uh, ten pin, this this pin, okay, bowling pin. This pin rotates because the axis of rotation, basically, it's coming out of the page towards you. Okay, so this, this guy is rotating because the, ax, the axis of rotation is internal to the object. Whereas in this case, the axis of rotation was external or is external. Here's another example of a puck that's um, attached via a cable to this axis of rotation and it, re it revolves, okay, it revolves on this plane, on this two-dimensional surface, circular motion, and because the axis of rotation is external, it revolves, okay. So now the, the last thing quickly that I want to mention here is, um, if you've got this puck, for example, or an object moving in circular motion. As you can see, it's moving in a kind of a circular motion there. Um, the displacement of that object is given by this delta r vector. And how do you get this delta r vector? Well, we know that initial position plus your delta r gives you your final position. Right? R1, R initial plus delta R gives us R final. And what we know is that if we divide this by our delta T, we have our average velocity. And so our average velocity is always in the same direction, of course, as our delta R. But if we keep making this the, the time interval over which we measure delta R smaller and smaller and smaller, we will eventually see that our instantaneous velocity is perpendicular to our position vector. So as the time interval approaches zero, the average velocity, this average velocity, approaches instantaneous velo velocity, which is two things. It is, which is the same thing. It is perpendicular to the, the direction of this pos uh, position vector, and it is tangent to the circular trajectory. Okay? So, let's look here. It says, the instantaneous velocity v of an object in circular motion is always perpendicular to the object's position measured from the center of the circular trajectory. Okay? We did know that in terms of the, the velocity being tangent, we, we did see that before when we considered um, projectile motion. We, we, we knew that the velocity vector was always tangent to that motion. Okay? See you in the next one.